Hello everyone, welcome to all for the lecture series of Naval Architecture for MEO examination. If you are visiting my channel first time, please like, share and subscribe. Also, don't forget to press the bell icon to get the exciting lectures on Naval Architecture. Hello everyone. This is the lecture number 9 of the lecture series of Naval Architecture made for the MEO examination. In today's lecture, we are going to focus on the buoyancy and the flotation. Before starting the lecture, I want to show one video. In this video, you will find what is Archimedes principle what is the relationship of the underwater volume with the buoyancy these all the things we will see in the video and after the completion of the video i will focus on the inferences which we are getting from the video you might have seen pictures or videos of people floating effortlessly in the dead sea if you think it's easy, try reclining in a similar position in a freshwater pool. Most likely, you will sink. Do you know why? Let us look for the answer in Archimedes' principle. We shall understand this principle through an activity. Here is an object whose volume is 130 cubic centimeters. Weigh this object using a spring balance. Its weight is 10 Newton. Now, take a Eureka can. Fill it with water up to the spout. Under the spout, place a measuring cylinder on a weighing scale. Now gradually dip the object in water. Observe that water starts overflowing through the spout and the reading in the spring balance registers a continuous fall. Once the object is completely immersed in water, no more water flows out and the balance shows a steady reading. Note this new reading. It is 8.70 newtons. Hence, we can say that the object appears to be lighter inside the water. This weight is called its apparent weight in water. The object appears to have lost 10 minus 8.70 equals 1.30 Newton weight. We have previously learned that this apparent loss in the weight is equal to the buoyant force that acts on the object. The buoyant force is therefore 1.30 Newton. Now measure the volume of water collected in the measuring cylinder. It is 130 cubic centimeters, which is equal to the volume of the immersed part of the object. Note the weight of this displaced water. Interestingly, it is also 1.30 Newton, which is equal to the buoyant force. But are these two quantities always equal? Let us confirm by repeating the activity using a different liquid, say glycerin. Note that although the object again displaces 130 cubic centimeters of liquid, but this time the weight of the displaced liquid is 1.60 Newton, which is more than before. This is because the density of glycerin is more than that of water. Now, from the spring balance, Note the apparent weight in glycerin and calculate the apparent loss in weight. It is 1.60 Newton. Thus, the buoyant force acting on the object this time is 1.60 Newton. Isn't it interesting that in this case too, the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced? This relation was discovered by Archimedes and is called Archimedes' principle. It states that when an object is partially or completely immersed in a fluid, it experiences a buoyant force whose magnitude is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the immersed part of the object. 
Now, the weight of the fluid displaced is equal to the mass of the fluid displaced times the acceleration due to gravity g. If the density of the fluid is rho, then the buoyant force is equal to volume of the fluid displaced into rho into g, which is equal to volume of the immersed part of the object into rho into g. This equation clearly shows that the buoyant force depends only on the volume of the immersed part of the object and the density of the fluid. The same can be confirmed from the previous activities. In water, the object experienced a buoyant force of 1.30 Newton, while in glycerin it was 1.60 Newton. This is because the density of water is less than that of glycerin. Thus, we can infer that for the same object, the denser the fluid, the larger is the buoyant force acting on it. Does the buoyant force depend on the density of the object immersed? We can observe an answer by taking another solid object having the same volume of 130 cubic centimeters, but a different density, and immersing it completely in water. Note that the buoyant force remains the same as before, that is, 1.30 Newton. Can you now use Archimedes' principle to understand why it is possible to float effortlessly in the Dead Sea? Due to the presence of a large quantity of salt, density of the Dead Sea water is larger than that for the pool water. Thus, the buoyant force in the Dead Sea is also larger, even larger than your weight. Hence, it pushes you up to the surface and keeps you afloat, while in a swimming pool, you sink. Summary When an object is immersed in a fluid, it experiences a buoyant force equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by its immersed part. This is called Archimedes' principle. The buoyant force is equal to volume of the fluid displaced into rho into g, which is equal to volume of the immersed part into rho into g. For the same object, the denser the fluid, the larger is the buoyant force acting on it. The buoyant force depends only on the volume of the immersed part of the object and the density of the fluid. So whatever the things we have seen in the video, let me explain in more detail with the help of some experiments and we will take some numerical numbers. So if you see in front of you that I have taken one uh, a cuboid whose volume is one meter cube, whose volume is one meter cube and uh, with the help of a weighing machine i have done the weight of this cuboid it is coming 4000 kg and with the help of a weighing machine that we have done it is in air 4000 kg we can call it as a this is the actual weight of the object or you can say actual weight of this cuboid now what i am doing now i am putting this object in the water and that water i have taken as a fresh water and with the help of a weighing machine, with the help of a weighing machine, I am uh, uh, measuring. Uh, I am measuring with the help of a weighing machine. I am checking how much is the weight is coming. The weight is coming around the thousand kg. Around the thousand kg. Okay. So initially it was a four thousand kg when you have measured in the air. It was a four thousand kg. Now, when you have done the measurement of the same object in the fresh water, it is coming 3000 kg. So, it means that you are losing some weight of the object when you are immersed in the uh, fresh water. How much what, uh, weight you have lost here, that will be weight of the object in the air minus weight of the object in the fresh water, that will be coming 4000 minus 3000 so it will be around 1000 kg it means that there will be some force acting 
in upward direction whose magnitude is a thousand kg whose magnitude is a thousand kg so upward force is a thousand kg downward force is a four thousand kg what will happen here the weight is more than the bar this upward force it means that this object definitely it will sink in the water if you remove this measuring instrument it will be definitely submerged in the water why because the weight is more than that of the uh, the buoyant force which is acting in upward direction so if you want to make now what i am going to conclude from here if you want to make any object to make a float the object has to satisfy this condition what is the condition buoyant force is equal to the total weight the buoyant force is acting in upward direction total weight is acting in downward direction in this case what happened you can see here in this case the total weight is acting 4000 downward and buoyant force is acting in upward that is a thousand kg only so this is a mismatch of the total weight and the buoyant force and here the total weight is more because of that this object is going to completely submerge under the water the buoyant force is no longer helping the object to float if you want to make the float this object you should have a buoyant force equal to the total weight of the object okay that you need to understand we will take few more example how to make the object float now in this case you have seen that the uh, the volume of the object is only 1 meter cube and the weight is a 4000 kg so what i will do now i will increase the volume of the object let me keep the weight is same weight will be remain same and i will increase the volume of the object you can make it as a hollow but the volume should be one uh, more than one meter cube when weight will be remain same 4000 so if this is the condition how to proceed for that so what i am going to do now i will keep the total weight of the object will be remains constant that is a 4000 kg but i will increase the volume of the object from one meter cube to eight meter cube by making it as a hollow now volume of the object is 8 meter cube volume of the object is a 8 meter cube so as we have seen in the video that uh, there will be a, a buoyant force is acting in upward direction and what was the formula for the buoyant force fb is equal to rho into v rho into v now what is the rho here again i am taking the density as a fresh water density 1000 and v now in this case v is a 8 meter cube now if you see the buoyant force is coming 8000 kg buoyant force is 8000 kg that will be acting upward direction at this instant now i am talking only at an instant point at this instant when the object is completely submerged that time buoyant force i am getting 8000 kg and the weight is acting 4000 kg downward so weight is lesser than the buoyant force so what will happen because of the more buoyant force this object will try to adjust itself in such a way that in such a way that total weight it should be equal to the buoyant force it should be equal to the buoyant force how the buoyant force is going to change how the buoyant force is going to change by changing the underwater volume so how much buoyant force you want you want the 4000 buoyant force because the weight is 4000 i need the buoyant force also 4000 it means that if you want the buoyant force 4000 we will do in the opposite calculation buoyant force 4000 if you want so what is the formula for the buoyant force rho into v the density is a thousand then how much will how much will be the volume that will be 4000 minus a thousand so it will be volume should be 4 meter cube so you should have underwater volume is a 4 meter cube you should have underwater volume 4 meter cube then only you will get the buoyant force 
4000 kg so this is the condition this is the condition where you are getting buoyant force equal to the total weight which is acting in a downward direction so this is the condition where the object is going to float okay this is the condition where the object is going to float now for time being consider that uh, uh, the the depth of the object again i am taking the numerical value only for the understanding the depth of the whole object is a 4 meter and the volume is a 8 meter cube total volume now i got the volume as a 4 meter cube just a half of the earlier it means that the draft should be a half that will be 2 meter cube 2 meter so at this instant the draft is a 2 meter at this instant draft is a 2 meter now what i am going to do what i am going to do i am going to add extra weight here i am going to add the extra weight here of a thousand kg example thousand kg i am going to add now what will happen now total weight is a uh, five thousand and at this instant the buoyant force is a four thousand so this is a mismatch between the buoyant force and the weight so what will happen this object will try to adjust the draft in such a way that in such a way that the buoyant force and the total weight remains the same how it will happen how it will happen this object will sink little bit this object will sink little bit you can see here this object will sink a little bit and this object will displace some amount of the water this object will displace some amount of the water and the weight of the object weight of the water displaced by the object that will be equal to the extra weight which is added it means that in this case we have added the extra weight is a thousand kg we have added the extra weight as a thousand kg and because of that because of that you got the total boil total weight total weight you got a 4000 plus a thousand kg it means that total weight is a 5000 kg it means that i want the buoyancy also 5000 kg initial buoyancy was a 4000 it means that i need extra thousand kg of the buoyancy it means that whatever the water displaced by this uh, uh, object it will have the weight is same as that of a thousand kg same as that of a thousand kg and because of that the object is sinking and the draft has to increase and that will be more than two meter earlier draft was a two meter now the new draft will be more than a two meter i hope uh, all of you understood uh, this concept about the buoyancy so what is the conclusion from this whole uh, uh, discussion is that we have to remember always first inference is what is the buoyant force what is the buoyant force that is equal to rho g into v if you are multiplying with a g the unit of the buoyant force will be newton if you are not multiplying with a g the unit of the buoyant force will be in a kg or in a tons that depends on the the density that depends on the density unit of the density if you are taking the density the unit is a thousand kg per meter cube then the unit of the buoyant force will be in a kg if you are taking the density in a tons per meter cube the unit of the buoyant force will be in a tons okay that is the only the matter of the this multiplication of the g this is the first inference the second inference is uh, if any object wants to float the object has to satisfy one condition that is a uh, total weight of the object is equal to buoyant force if this is the condition is satisfying then only we can say the object is going to float if the weight of the object is greater than the buoyant force what will happen the object is going to sink object is going to sink okay now i will ask some questions now we'll ask some questions
now you can see i have a one iron nail you can see here iron nail i am putting that iron nail in a, a water and i found that iron nail is completely submerged in the water but the ship made up of iron is a floating we know that the ship of size of the ship is very big the weight of the ship also very high but still the, the ship is a floating why what is actually happening so we will see that in case of a iron nail the weight of the object or the weight of the iron nail will be more than the buoyant force will be more than the buoyant force what is buoyant force that is a rho into v it means that the volume of the nail is not sufficient to make the nail float so because of that buoyant force is less and weight of the nail is more and because of that the nail is completely submerged in the water but in case of a ship the ship is uh, uh, displacing some amount of the liquid because of that you will get some buoyant force and that buoyant force is very much sufficient to support the total weight of the ship and this is the condition where you are getting total weight is equal to buoyant force and the ship is a floating this is the one example let me give one more example to understand this concept of the buoyancy how can you get 50 kg of the solid steel to float it means that i have one object i have one solid steel whose weight is 50 kg and i found that if i put that solid steel in the water or any liquid it is completely submerged it is completely submerged then i want to make that 50 kg of the solid steel to float how to do that the only thing is you have to work on the the underwater volume why the object is floating the condition is like this only this condition may be happen the total weight is greater than the buoyant force this is the condition only happen because of that this 50 kg of the solid steel is submerged so we need to work on this buoyant force then only you can make total weight is equal to buoyant force total weight will be remain same that will be 50 kg so if you want to make this object float we have to work on the buoyant force what is buoyant force rho into v rho is the density of the liquid and v is the volume displaced by the object so how to make this 50 kg of the solid steel to float the only thing is you have to change the shape Now to change the shape. How to change the shape? Like this. So you can see here, this 50 kg of the ball is completely submerged. It means that here, whatever the weight is there and whatever the buoyant force we are getting in this condition, weight is greater than the buoyant force. To avoid this problem, we have changed the shape of the object like this. And in this condition, total weight is equal to buoyant force. this condition we are satisfying and because of that the object is floating i hope all of you understood uh, the concept of the buoyancy and how the ship floats okay thank you very much